It's time for another foray into a chiller's art game. The previous chiller's game we looked at was Parasocial, a game which was all about the perils of online streaming and having a stalker, a parasocial relationship. This time round we'll be looking at chiller's newest release, The Kidnap. Now this game was a weaker entry than the previous one, but it still did have some classic creepy chiller moments in it, and the story itself was on the simpler side of things. But that's it for an intro, let's get into why you're here, which is to discuss the plot and the story. Please be aware that there will be spoilers in this video for The Kidnap. Before we begin, a quick word from the sponsor of this video, Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN are back with another amazing offer. This time, as part of their Black Friday price cut, they are offering you a three-year VPN plan for just $1.70 per month plus six months extra. With over 750 servers around the world, connection to Atlas VPN servers is incredibly stable and lightning fast. Now, this means that if you're a gamer playing online competitively or just for fun and need a reliable connection, then this is ideal for you. As well as that benefit, you'll also be safe from being DDoSed and also from things such as avoiding a lobby full of bots. Of course, it's not just used for gaming. As a massive sports fan myself, living in the UK, I find it extremely difficult to watch any US sports, so I just hop onto Atlas VPN, fire up whatever US-based streaming service I use, and I can watch anything – basketball, baseball, and American football. This is also really good for using in conjunction with Netflix, where you can turn on your VPN and use it to access Netflix servers around the world. Different servers, of course, mean different options. You can use it on multiple devices and Atlas VPN can also block any malicious links, ads and trackers and it also notifies you if and when someone is trying to steal your data. So make sure you take up this amazing three year VPN plan for $1.70 per month. Remember you also get those six months extra too and that works out at 86% off. You also have a 30 day money back guarantee as well. Be quick and get your deal by clicking the link in the description box below or by looking for the pinned link in the comments section. It's the 3rd of July. Third grader Renya wakes up to find that he has wet the bed again. Terrified of what his mother will do and say to him, Renya can choose to either tell his sister Sakiko or to tell his mother. Leaving his room, Renya overhears a conversation between Sakiko and his mother. She is trying to tell their mother about an open day at school, but their mother tells her to shut up and not to talk to her. Their mother wished that they weren't there and that she hadn't given birth to them. If he tells his mother, she is angry but tells Renya not to bother her. She seems to be packing a suitcase, indicating that she's going somewhere. Speaking to Sakiko, she tells Renya to grab his bedsheets. They go downstairs and Renya washes the sheets. Almost two months later, Renya and his sister are home alone, with their mother having been gone since the 3rd of July throughout the entirety of their school summer vacation. Sakiko is downstairs cooking food for them. The house is a mess with empty ramen cups and trash everywhere. She's done something different this evening though and prepared them both a curry. After hanging the laundry, they sit down to eat. Sakiko is doing well in her studies and has been acing all of her tests. It seems that despite their mother abandoning them, she still loves their mother. Sakiko studies hard in order to try and impress their mother. A few days later, Renya checks the laundry. He thinks that it's odd that his sister hasn't called for him, so he searches for her. The house is now even more overrun with trash. Renya can't find her in the house and noticing that her shoes are gone, he ventures out into the rain in search of her. He calls out to her, but there's no sign of her anywhere. Three days later, Sakiko is still missing. Renya is at school. Renya completes his cleaning duties before class, and in the class, the teacher tells the kids not to follow strangers on the way home and to be wary of suspicious adults. After speaking with the teacher about the fact that his sister is in fact still missing, and after choosing to help out his classmates with various issues, he gathers together with his friends and they leave the school to walk to their respective homes. They talk about a rumour going around the school that an evil clown has been abducting people after forcing entry into their homes. The friends stop off at the park to play a quick game of hide and seek. Renya loses at a game of rock, paper, scissors, so it's decided that he will be the seeker. It doesn't take him long to find his friends, but whilst he is searching for them, he spots a creepy man show up. After Renya has found all his mates, the strange man runs over and asks if he can play. So the kids, with a plan, let him try and find them, then when he turns his back to count, they all run off, leaving the man there. Deciding that's enough fun and games for one day, they all begin to walk home again. On the way, they pressure Renya into stealing some stuff from a convenience store. Starving and with nothing to eat at home, Renya has no choice. He goes in and steals a drink, some snacks and a cup ramen for dinner. One by one, the friends break off and go into their respective houses. Renya returns home. On the way, he thinks he spots something out of the corner of his eye. A clown. 
Renya is then chased by someone driving a van and he runs home. After washing his hands, Renya eats his dinner. He then sits and does some homework. It seems that someone was watching him. Heading downstairs, the trash building up is starting to attract flies, so after feeding the fish, Renya sits down to play some video games. After an intense gaming session, Renya hears the doorbell ringing, and at the door, a clown. Renya finds a note from the clown on the coffee table, stating that he has Sakiko, and that if he doesn't want to lose her, he needs to break all the balloons. Renya gets to work in trying to burst all of the balloons, under the watchful gaze of the scary clown. Whether he does or he doesn't, a strange rainbow door shows up in the house, and heading through it, the clown is in there, as is Sakiko, and she's in a cage. Renya then wakes up from his nightmare, relieved that it was just that, a nightmare. He hears the family cat, Tama, meowing and sets out to find it. Renya tracks the cat down to a closet, but he is surprised by the creepy guy from the park, who says, I found you. So Renya has been kidnapped. He's taken back to the kidnapper's house in the stranger's van, and what's more is that his sister is there in the van with them. Renya later wakes up in a locked room containing a bloody bedroll and a hammer. Not knowing where he is, Ren uses the hammer to pry the boards on the windows away and escapes onto the roof. Spotting Sakiko in the neighbouring room, Renya tries to get her attention, but she's got headphones on and can't hear him. At that moment though, the kidnapper arrives back home again. Renya needs to go and meet his sister so that they can escape together. He makes it to the room Sakiko is in. Bizarrely, she doesn't appear to want to leave. It seems that she asked the kidnapper to kidnap her. What's more, she had the kidnapper take Renya too. Maybe that way, their mother would realise that she really does love her children and that she would come for them. Reeling from this fresh serving of pure insanity from his older sister, Renya decides that he should just try to escape. Inside the house, Renya finds a diary. It appears that the kidnapper's name is Sarau. The mother had been subjected to abuse from her husband, Sarau's father. Sarau, as he was growing up, started to resemble his father more and more. So filled with the resentment of her, I'm presuming, former husband, Sarau's mother would physically abuse Saro and keep him locked up in a room. The very same room that Renya woke up in. Now this had obviously affected Sarau, and he lost his mind as a result. Anyway, Renya makes it downstairs and finds the kidnapper passed out drunk in the kitchen. He grabs the kidnapper's key, but as he goes to leave, he is once again captured and taken back into the house. His sister comes in and tells him to relax, but the man listens to everything she says. Then she asks Renya not to ruin her plan for getting their mother to love her again. Sakiko then leaves. Alright, so Renya has a choice on what to do next. His choice will affect the outcome. If Renya chooses to obey Sakiko and to go along with her plan, they stay there for two weeks. Renya doesn't go to school, he doesn't agree with his sister's plan, but nonetheless he does trust her. One day they are in the kitchen preparing food. The kidnapper is just sat in front of the window. After chopping some carrots, potatoes and onions, the doorbell rings. Going to answer it, it's a police officer. Renya then tells the police officer everything and the kidnapper is arrested. The children's mother is then contacted. Picking them up, embarrassed that something her children did resulted in the police getting involved, their mother takes them home. Sakiko seems happy, she's got her mother back. She thinks her plan works, I say thinks, as when they get home again, the mother essentially tells them that she's fed up with her children being a nuisance. Due to the police calling her, the mother is more concerned about public and police perceptions of her, rather than the safety of her own children. She then tells the kids she doesn't give a damn about them, and leaves the house again with Sakiko devastated her grand plan actually didn't work at all. Going back to Renya's choice again, Renya can choose to escape. With his sister downstairs along with the kidnapper, he has to sneak around the house to try to find ways to distract Sakiko and their kidnapper by way of different items. In the kitchen, Renya finds a TV remote. Sakiko is watching TV, so this is a perfect distraction. He also finds a battery. Then turning round, he sees something in the attic. Heading up there, he sees a ghost. It's the ghost of the kidnapper's mother. At this point, he had killed her with the hammer. He also finds human remains up there too. Heading back down in the house, Renya uses the TV remote and uses the battery in order to facilitate his escape from the house. Using the kidnapper's bike, he rides as fast as he can. He is chased by the kidnapper who is in his van. At a crossroads, Renya has another choice. He can go to his friend Keiji's house, to his friend Masahiro's house, or to his own home. If he goes to either Keiji or Masahiro's house, their concerned parents phone the police, leading to the kidnapper being arrested, and Renya's mother picking them up again and abandoning them. If Renya goes back to his own house instead of his friends, the kidnapper crashes his van and runs after Renya on foot. He makes it back home, but unable to hide anywhere in time, he is caught by the kidnapper. 
This time, presented with the choice at the crossroads, if Renya decides to head towards his house and instead goes to his third friend's house, his friend Kohime, the outcome is different. Kohime's mother works at a child guidance centre taking care of troubled kids and agreed to shelter Renya and Sakiko for a few days. Kohime's mother spoke to the kidnapper and somehow convinced her that he meant no harm. She tells Renya and his sister to leave the man alone and suggested foster care for them both. Then, one day at the guidance centre, their mother turns up, saying that she's taking her kids back. They're driving back to the house, and their mother asks what happened. Sakiko says that she asked the kidnapper to kidnap them. Naturally, despite Sakiko trying to explain, this goes down like a lead balloon, and their mother turns the car around and drives straight to the kidnapper's home. Their mother confronts the kidnapper and hits him. This triggers him. He gets flashbacks to what his mother used to subject him to, and out of nowhere, he stabs the mother with his gardening tool. She is dead. Sakiko is devastated, but the creepiest part is what Renya does. He just stands there, smiling. The police show up and arrest the kidnapper. He is taken away and the house is cordoned off by the police. With them finding all the body parts in the attic and the evidence inside the house, the kidnapper is going away for a very long time. And the game then ends. And that's pretty much it for the kidnap. Short and sweet, a simple story and a few creepy moments. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and comment your thoughts on this particular Chiller's Art game down below. But for now, take care and I will see you in the next one.